Hi, I'm Jodie. Welcome back to my channel and I have a new toy. <laughs> Magic, you know. It's probably not going to work. But this is my new plaything. I'm getting ready for the Christmas market. If you've watched my Art of the Psychic podcast that I do with Sarah, we spoke about a reflection of my first Maker's Market in July. Um, I did two Fridays. I learned a lot from that experience and I'm now doing my third one, which is at Christmas. But if you go and look back at my videos, you'll see that I've changed a lot since my first, my second, and now my third. Um, in my first one, I had some stands, but most of my items were on the tables. It was very flat layout. Um, I had my banner up high behind me. I learned from that one that height is key and having your display up higher is really important because you're at the eye level of the customer and the audience so they're able to see your products more clearly. It also gives you more room because you're adding height as well as your table space to have your products more clearly laid out, have room for more products um, and have more designated spaces for each item. So I changed that between the first one and the second one. On the second one, I had a bit more height. I used my banner um, display stand to hang my cards, which made a huge difference. I added some other things as well, but go look at that video to find out about that. Um, and this time I'm adding a few other display elements. So in here is a floor standing card display rack. So I figured you could unbox it with me and put it together with me. Hopefully it's going to be easy. Um, come with the instructions on the outside of the box. I haven't actually opened the box yet. And it says I've only got four steps to work from, so let's hope that it is that simple. We'll find out. I tend to make things more complicated than they need to be. Let's get started. All right, let's get this baby open. I'm quite surprised how big it is, actually, because I thought it was going to come a little bit more flat pack. Because one of the things I'm thinking about, I want more display stuff like things to display my items on so I can look a little bit more professional make things a bit clearer so I've got to think about as much as I want loads of bells and whistles and I want it to be really lovely I've got to think realistically about whether I can carry it around the corner because there's no parking on site um, I've got to wheel everything up a hill at St Catherine's Church in Ventnor so I've got to think about that really carefully. I have got some wheels, but even with the wheels last time, my little old arms really struggled to get up the hill. I really relied on Jacob's strength. So I've got to think really carefully about that. And it worries me that starting out, this box is so big. It is quite light though. I managed to carry it up the stairs and into this room by myself. So it's not too bad. Ooh. I've signed myself up for an extra one that I wasn't planning on doing, but my friend's mum, Sue, invited me to their Christmas fair at the school. Um, and that's a really short one. It's only an hour and a half. So that would be a good tester to see what it'd be like lugging all this stuff in and setting out how quickly I can do it. Because it, that's starting at um, three, I think it is. I can't remember now, I should look that up. So at three, I think, and we're gonna be there half an hour before. So I've only got half an hour set out time. When I did the Ventnor Fringe in July, uh, our, well, we had different slots when you could arrive. Fortunately, mine was quite early. So I had quite a lot of time to set up, which was great because it was my first time. It was going to take me longer. Um, but every time I change my setup, I've got to relearn how it's all going to be put together. Fortunately, for the Christmas one, I've got quite an early slot as well. So I've got plenty of time to carry things up. So I've got to take all of that into consideration. And if you're planning on doing a market store, make sure you think about these things too. Because uh, in July, I took everything in suitcases so I could wheel them. And I had a trolley and that was great. But storing the suitcases during the day was really tricky because they're quite bulky and they don't flat pack down. So I am looking at getting flat pack carry boxes so that I can, once I unload everything, I can flat it all down, have some extra room for my stock. Um, and then I just um, flat pack it when I want to pack everything away. Let's get these out. So these look like the card racks which are quite a good size actually. I was a little bit worried that these were going to be rather small because they look quite small in the picture, but I've got small uh, sort of cards. I've got square cards to go in. So 
Oh, I'm going to go grab cards because I want to see where it's going to look. Okay. This is my square card that I already sell all year round. Um, this was one of my first designs that I did. It was lovely golden. And then I've also got my Christmas cards, which are slightly smaller. They're A6 size. I know I should wait until it's all together. I'm too excited. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Oh, well, it looks very cute. The only thing I'm concerned about is that this base here encroaches on this space a little bit. So I can't stack that many inside. I'll probably only be able to put, I don't know, five in there without it being too squished. So that's a little bit worrying um, if you want to have more. So if, say if you're going to be there for a few days, you want to really stack, stack this out. I don't think it's going to stack that well. It's more of a kind of short display items, it looks like, or a small amount of display items. I'm hoping that this fits in. Perfect. So if you've got A6 cards, this would be perfect for you because you can utilise the whole space. You've got the whole room. <coughs> Except for that, that's a bit of a curse. <laughs> Odd shape. I mean, I've seen better ones, but this was an affordable stand. I didn't want to spend a lot of money on it. Um, cause I've, I've already spent quite a bit of money on my setup and I want to start making a profit. <laughs> so I need to spend a little less money on it. But I do like how that looks. I just can't put in as many as I was hoping I would be able to. Oh, and this one comes with wheels. Um, some of the stands are just stands on the ground. But I figured if I could wheel it, then I only have to carry it to the door and then I can wheel it the rest of the way. <laughs> so this is the inner shape. All of those attached to this, so I, I was wondering whether it would be flat pack and I could take it down and put it back up on the day. But it looks like, because I've got a lot of screws, it's probably going to be fixed once it's up. It has to stay that way and I just have to carry it. Oh. So I may need to think about how I'm going to put it all in my car. I don't have Jacob, so I've got a bit of the passenger side to put things on. What is this bit about? It must be the top. Because it's got a little space for you to put a card, which is quite cool. So you can put the prices of all the cards if you've got the same. Or some big signage so that people can see them. Because that must stop the pole, I imagine. I don't know, actually. <laughs> and the casters. They stink. They stink. I can't tell you exactly what it is, but they smell. Oh, they give us one. I like that. Helps disorganise people like me. That's nice and easy. <laughs> I might edit that out because that's embarrassing. But here's me wheeling it around. Thinking <laughs> I'm screwing it in. But I can't be because it's wilderness round. So greasy. Uh, okay, horrible texture. <laughs> I mean, I can tell you it's well lubricated. I mean, these wheels aren't going to get stuck anytime soon. Oh, I just missed an opportunity. I'll be right back once I've done these slimy things. Okay, I'm still getting used to YouTube, so forgive me for forgetting this. But what do you think? <laughs> I've created a tea mill shop, which... There's another idea from another artist, Kathy, um, when I met her at the county show last year. Last year. I want to say May. I, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. So anyway, um, and she was wearing a beautiful t-shirt and I asked her how she printed her t-shirts because I currently use Redbubble. And she said she uses tea mill. There's a company on the island for it. So I created my own tea mill shop and I've started putting Christmas jumpers on, which has made me really excited. I ordered two samples, and this is one of them. My other one is a ratty one. And I love it. It's so soft, it's so comfy. This is the oversized jumper, so it's nice and baggy. You can eat your Christmas dinner and not worry about bloating because you've got loads and loads of room. Um, and it's really soft and really warm. And I should have been wearing it for the whole of the video so that I could promote it, but I forget all of the YouTube things. So here I am doing a YouTube thing. Here's my shirt. I'll link it down below. Please buy one of my jumpers. <laughs> Please buy a jumper. It's so cute. Enjoy it while I wear it, while I do this. Okay, 
back to the video. <laughs> one of these guys and there is. I'm trying to do this in front of you but I may need to disappear for some bits because I've only got two hands. It's gifted screwdriver. Do you guys keep yours as well when you get these in the in with packages? I have so many of just random attachments and I mean this one isn't even the right size for the screw. Not catching very well. It's a bit too small. I mean, thanks for it, but <laughs> please give me one that's the right size. If you do get this, be prepared to either just struggle like I'm going to do, or get your own one. The middle one. Um, yeah, that makes sense now. Never mind. <laughs> So this one's going to go like that so that the pole stops here. I was thinking the pole was going to stop down there, but of course it needs to attach to the base, doesn't it? Mm. Hoping I'm not rustling. I was worried my hair's going to rustle against the mic. This is new too. I'm getting used to using it. We're using it for our podcast now. So if you've been watching our podcast, you may notice that the audio quality is a bit better. We invested in some new mics. I'm already cringing at my first video because I was just so shy. <laughs> so shy. Don't like being in front of the camera, but I'm trying to be better at it because we are living in a technical world now and to be seen as an artist, you're competing with lots and lots of other people. So you have to do a little bit more to impress and get people's attention. Hopefully this is working. <laughs> Oh, this way round? <coughs> Forgive me for being an idiot, okay? I usually do this by myself. I figure it out in the end, even though I don't always know what I'm doing. I would blame the instructions, but... I mean, look at the pieces as you're putting them together. <laughs> me wondering what, what side I'm supposed to be putting it in. Oh, no. Pretty sure I'm doing this the wrong way around too, but... This is just what makes more sense to me. Yeah. And then hopefully this spins around. Okay. Sweet. So I'm just going to add all of the other bits. Quite a nice height, I think. Let me raise you up a tad. Yeah. There you go. Now you can see the top. Cool. So you can put a little tag up there. Oh. I was supposed to put all the panels on first. As well as my Christmas jumpers, I am putting on other designs. I've got some on there already, but it's work in progress. I'm hoping to have a nice array of designs per category. I'm doing a rat lovers category because that's the most personal to me and I want to do more rat designs and cute rat printed things. Um, but I'll be doing a dog, dog lovers one, a cat lovers one, generic one, any other kind of designs, and my weird and wonderful designs, which are random things that I like to do. <laughs> Check that out, have a look at that. Timo is mainly a clothing site, but they do do other products like the mugs and the, the tote bags and things. They would do jigsaw puzzles. <laughs> I'm really tempted to do a jigsaw puzzle going to think a little bit longer about what design I want to do for that. That would be fun. I think that'd be quite exciting. Still trying to find somewhere to get coasters for an affordable price because obviously you buy your product and you've got to mark it up to make a profit and to get some money back. But the coasters that I found, their starting price for you to buy it as a wholesaler, um, if you're can only afford small batches because I mean I can only get small batches I'm not a big company it's so expensive to start with and I don't want to charge someone you know nearly like five pound per coaster I think that's a bit extreme but you know what I mean I don't I wouldn't want to pay that much myself I don't really want to charge someone else uh, that much per coaster because one I don't think people would buy it because I mean if it were me I'd weigh up the value of it compared to being able to buy it more affordably from like your local superstore or something 
obviously it's different when you're buying from an artist because you're directly supporting the artist like you you know who you're giving your money to which is great but I think at the same time you have to weigh up whether you can afford it and justify the cost so I want to find something that's a little bit more affordable to to print and make so that I can still mark it up to get some profit from it but so that it isn't like a hundred pounds per coaster <laughs> <laughs> by, the time, by the time you've marked up to have some profit on how much you've spent to make it and obviously your time like I spent a lot of time designing it in the first place then putting it into the format needed to print it that is very time consuming and if I'm valuing my time on it oh, and trying to get a little bit of money back so that I can afford to work on some more and create more designs find more products that I can print my designs on and I need to be able to work in some profit but it gets to a point where people aren't going to buy it and you're stuck with you know like 50 odd coasters that you can't shift without losing money so yeah uh, at the end of that ramble if you know if you're another artist out there and you sell coasters if you know of a good website that I can order coaster designs from that are affordable that would be amazing and please leave me a message on this video or come find my socials and message me privately but yeah if you can let me know spread the spread the knowledge that would be great that's something I'm still trying to find so I use Redbubble a little bit I haven't put many more designs on there lately but I'm really excited about Timo at the moment about my store which I'll do a little link below so you can have a little nosy um, and you can personalise your page and it's more of a website for you rather than you being mixed in with lots of other products or lots of other artist products so you can kind of once you get people to come look at you they're just looking at you which is really cool I just want to figure out a way of linking it to my website because I have a website it's uh, www.jazzacraft.go.uk and that's got everything about me about the things I do outside of art all the projects I'm working on and some news um, I update a little blog on there. Um, it links you to my Substack. Oh, I'm back to my YouTube channel. And I just need to find a way of linking my T-mail to it as well. But it links you to my Etsy store if you want to get a portrait. Ah, <laughs> look at it. And I've been so excited to spin something in all my life. Look at that. That is smooth. Eventually then, this just lifts off. So, I mean, that's not too bad. I can separate the pole, I can separate the wheels, I can separate this, which, oh, weirdly, now that this is all joined together, this feels heavier than the box. How does that work? Take it off without laying this down because my ceiling's not high enough. So, <laughs> okay, I'm going to fill this and I'll be right back to show you what it's like with all my cards in. <laughs> okay. and I could use every other square as like an advertisement square so I can say buy five packs for this amount save this amount of money I can put a little square advertisement in there I could say about Christmas cards Possibilities. It means that I've got more room for card space. Ah, look at it. I knew it. I knew it. Okay. If you have a lot of different card designs like I do, then this would be really ideal for your market stall because you can showcase them and people can interact with it. I found from both market stalls, having something that you can interact with, like a table let turn, really got customers' attention. And something like this, you just can't resist having a look because it's like a little mini gallery display. And each card has my link tree on the back so it's like a business card for if anyone does buy them i think i've definitely got room for some more designs um i am wanting to create some more of these because i just love this selection that i've got with all the colors on this is my judy card which is one of a more limited edition bespoke design that i did so julie is a lady that i swim with in the sea um she's part of a group called salty swimmers or cv salties uh, which started during lockdown as a way of still connecting to people but keeping a good distance and they swim in the sea all year round nearly every day um, 
I swim with them. I don't swim every day just because work gets in the way or I get tired or get ill. And blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm not as committed <laughs> as uh, Julie and the other swimmers are. But uh, this is shining light on a gloomy day. So this was inspired by a swim day. And it was such a gloomy day where it was as if you were swimming in grayscale. The sea and the sky was so similar tones that you could not really see where the sea ended and the sky began. And Julie always swim, swims in sort of pinky colours. And especially during the winter, like we are here, she's wearing her pink neoprene jacket. Um, she just is illuminated against all of that gloominess. And her personality is very similar to that as well. She's a very bubbly and you just can't help but smile when you're around her. So she is a shining light on a gloomy day, figuratively and literally. So yeah, that's why I designed this card with a nice pink envelope. But there's only one design. So it's one of those troubles where I can't really create a display with it because it is on its own. And I do sh wonder whether to include it in the Christmas one. Sadly, it is too big. <laughs> a shame. Have one like that. I would much prefer them to be this way around. But alas, I can't. This is the original design. And this is my jumper design. Again, go to my T-Mill store, please. Buy a jumper. Support to me as an artist and all the effort I put in. Oh, that's cute too. How do I want to do it? I don't want to put my Christmas cards in here because I want them to have their own display. I've got a separate card stand coming, which is going to be for the table. And that's where my Christmas cards are going to be displayed. Hum, 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 hum. Cool. That's it. I'll let you know how it goes in person in December and hopefully I'll take a video so you can see the setup. If you like my jumper, go and check out my T-Mill store. I'll link it below. If you want one of these, I'll link the Amazon link so you can go and buy one. And if you want to go back to how my previous ones went to see what I've already changed, go back and look at those. And I think that's it. If you could subscribe, that'd be great. Like this video if it was helpful. It's a lot of me learning, so it may not be helpful to you. But if you like this display, please let me know. And yeah, see you soon. Goodbye.